In this lecture, I will present you with a positive example of marine management here with nutrient management in a semi-enclosed sea, the Baltic Sea. You will learn that it's essential that coastal management is working, that there are effective uh, international treaties so that nations work together that are uh, situated uh, around or along a coastline. You will see that a sound scientific analysis of the problem is essential to find the right solution. And you will see that many uh, management problems towards sustainable use of oceans are multifactorial problems. So there is no single patent solution that will bring us forward, but a bundle of solutions that we need, in this case, to, find, to fight nutrient pollution. Nutrient pollution is a very serious threat to many ecosystems, in particular along the coasts. For one thing, they cause algal blooms. For example, here, blooms of blue-green algae that can be toxic. And when they die and sink down, they will cause oxygen depletion or oxygen dead zones. And also, nutrient pollution may kill coastal vegetation by overgrown with ephemeral opportunistic algae. So these problems of nutrient pollution are still relatively benign in open ocean areas, but they very much affect coastal areas, and they um, are extremely critical in enclosed oceans, such as the Baltic Sea, that is surrounded by 80 million people that are living in industrialized countries with a pretty intense agriculture and other lifestyles we will see in a minute that all produce um, mineral nutrients that enhance plant growth in the sea. The Baltic Sea is the largest brackish water area in the world and it's surrounded uh, by several countries. Most of them are EU, European Union member states and that's going to become important for the governance aspect of the nutrient management. So how severe is the situation in the Baltic Sea? It's pretty severe and the, the Baltic is actually a bad case a study of some of the most extensive dead zones that are not even uh, with low oxygen levels as here depicted in red but that have a, a zero oxygen and the development of hydrogen sulfide that's toxic to most animals. And those dead zones we now know through very good time series from sediment cores. Um, they have expanded 20-fold in the past 100 years. A sound scientific analysis of the nutrient influx situation uh, revealed that there are several different critical sources of nutrients. So we have point sources. Those are relatively easy to deal with, so they are mainly uh, wastewater from municipal settlements and they can be dealt with by setting up wastewater treatment plants and this has happened in the past 20 years in a very ambitious program all around the Baltic. However, those point sources often only contribute to 50% or less of the total additional nutrient influx into the Baltic Sea. The bigger chunk are diffuse sources, from mainly from agricultural practices and from traffic. You may be surprised here. And those diffusive sources, they either come through rivers uh, or even through the atmosphere. And how would traffic be contributing to uh, fertilization here by nitrogen species? So this is because the combustion of gasoline produces uh, different nitrogen oxides, collectively called NOx, and when they rain down, they're perfect nitrogen fertilizers. So here we see very nicely the interdependency of many environmental problems. You may not have thought that agricultural practices, including organic farming way inland, may affect the nutrient balance and ecosystem health uh, in, uh, in an ocean. And likewise, you probably may not have thought that having appropriate catalytic converters in cars that will convert the NOx to N2 that's inert 
and that's just what we breathe, and 80% uh, of every breath we take uh, would again help to alleviate nutrient pollution in the Baltic Sea. So collectively, changes in agricultural practices, for example, better timing of manure, protecting the watersheds, leaving uh, a strip of land um, uh, not used for fertilization, uh, and also, of course, implementing <coughs> uh, clean air, um, better catalysts in cars, collectively led to a decrease in the estimated input of nitrogen into the Baltic, and the same would hold for phosphorus, the second major uh, micronutrient element. But there can be more to nutrient management, and that's currently been under intense research. So one more innovative measure may be to expand mariculture with a rope culture of mussels, for example, to actively extract nutrients in form of the biomass then of the mussels, uh, which at the same time would provide biomass from the oceans that can be converted into animal food, for example. And the same would be true with algal culture. Um, and also, again, in a more integrative perspective, we also have to look at the natural coastal vegetation that's able to absorb nutrients. That's a critical and very valuable ecosystem service that macrophytes, such as seagrasses in the Baltic Sea, but also bladder wreck as a major algal species, provide for humans so they abs absorb nutrients into their biomass and they store it for a longer term. So those two innovative measures, mariculture and enhancing the coastal vegetation are some additional, not exclusive, but additional measures where there's intense research at the moment how much they could contribute to even make the nutrient balance for the Baltic better. So what was critical to make uh, out of this happen? I think very critical is if we look how the ecosystem health in the Baltic is working in terms of governance structure. So most of the Baltic countries, except Russia, are EU, are EU member states now. And the EU has set quite ambitious goals of achieving a good environmental status by 2020. And uh, there's also, um, there would be a financial punishment if those goals are not achieved by the EU Commission. And at the same time now, even taking Russia on, on board with the Halcom Commission, there has been the Baltic Action Plan, which basically enforces that <coughs> legal body implemented by the EU, again, towards uh, a management of this coastal ocean, and here very specifically to reduce one of the most severe environmental problems, that is nutrient pollution. So take home messages, governance here is essential. If you have many countries uh, sitting around uh, an ocean or along a coastline that has to be uh, dealt with as one management units, they have to cooperate, they have to work together, and they have to set, um, and they have to set uh, specific goals here, for example, for nutrient reduction, otherwise it would not work.